Hello and welcome to my first Blender tutorial. So today, you're going to be learning how to make a hydraulic press. So basically you can create a very satisfying simulation where you can have an object be squished by two, basically just two big cubes just moving together and it'll squish it. Now, this is something from real life, of course. Basically, hydraulic presses are these machines that with a bunch of force, I don't really know how they work, but with a bunch of force, they squish an object together. You might've seen like those satisfying videos or something. And so now you're gonna get to be able to make that in Blender without having to pay like $2,000 to buy a hydraulic press. So let's get right into it. So in order to make a hydraulic press, we need three things. First off, we need to have the hydraulic press. So the two cubes on the bottom, top and bottom. Then we need the object to squish. And third, we need to actually move those two cubes together and get a soft body simulation for our cube. So let's go ahead and get started with the two cubes on the top and the bottom that will animate together to basically squish the middle cube. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this cube and I'm just gonna bring it down on the Z axis, negative three. So now it's a little bit lower. And I'm gonna scale it up three so that it's kind of looking like that. Now, as you can see, we've got a nice and big cube, but as if, if you'll look, hydraulic presses are more of rectangles. So instead, let's go up to here, scale it on the y-axis, 0.25. And as you can see, now our cube is much smaller. Now you might want to scale it on the y-axis a little bit differently, but you know, it's up to your personal preference. This won't like affect very much, but as you can tell now I've got our cube. I'm gonna go ahead and move it down in the Z, negative one, just to give ourselves a little bit of space in that center area. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and go down to here with our animation stuff and go ahead and animate this. So basically all we need to do is make this cube move up one uh, meter, I'm pretty sure. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click I. So that'll insert its current location. Now I'm gonna go to frame, say, 60. And I'm gonna go and grab this, so G, Z, 1. Then I'm gonna click enter, and then I. And now I'll go ahead and keyframe it, so that, look at that, our cube's moving. Now, this is not a constant interpolation. Basically, it doesn't, like, it, it speed changes throughout the animation. Now, I'm just gonna leave it as that, but you might want to make it linear so that it's a constant speed. And you can simply do that in the graph editor. If you don't know how to do that, just search it up. So I'm going to go ahead and make the top cube, which is just as simple as just duplicating this, grabbing on the Z and putting in six, no, putting in eight. And as you can see, that leaves ourselves with an even gap in that center area. Now I'm going to go, have to go ahead and change up our keyframes here a little bit. So I'm just going to delete them and just redo that process, but in the other direction. So I'm going to go ahead and insert its rotation. I mean, not rotation, location by clicking I. And I'm going to go to frame 60, which is the other frame that this bottom cube finishes uh, moving, grab it on the Z, negative one, and then I'm gonna insert that. And as you can see, the exact same speed, it crushes together. So great, now, next up, we've gotta have our cube in the center that gets squished. So first off, I'm just gonna go ahead and add in a cube. Now, just for animation sakes and for the simulation, I'm gonna scale this 0.9. Now this will make, give it a little bit of wiggle room between the two so that it looks a little bit better. You can change this however you want. Next up, before I go and bake the simulation, I'm gonna go and check my camera view. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and move this camera by clicking shift and then tilde key. Um, if you don't have that, you'll have to rebind your um, stuff in the preferences menu. So I'm gonna go ahead and move our camera down to say here. Now this will give us a much better view at what the cube is doing in this hydraulic press. Okay, now that we've got all that sorted out, we can finally get to actually making this simulation run. So first off, let's go ahead and go to our two cubes. So just click that bottom one, and then let's go over to here and just, just click collision. Don't change anything else. That's, that's all you need to click. And do the same for this top one. This will give them an actual collision so that our cube here actually gets squished by the hydraulic press. Now in order to simulate the squishing, we're going to go ahead and use a soft body. So, first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and just uncheck this goal thing. That almost never helps out with when you're making a soft body simulation. Then go ahead and expand this edges menu and click on edge and faces. This will make it more realistic and just make it better looking. We're going to also want to turn on self collision so that it looks a little bit better and doesn't like clip into itself. And that should be all you need. 
I do recommend though that you turn plasticity up to like like a hundred and bending up to like two. This will make it a little bit stiff and then but then when it does get start to get crushed, it'll keep that form and not get very buggy. Okay, we've got all that. Now let's go into edit mode by clicking tab and then let's go ahead and right click it and click S or just click subdivide. And let's do this, I'm gonna do it say three times. I'm not gonna make this a very complex simulation, okay? Next up, let's go ahead and shade auto smooth this so that when the simulation does its magic, it doesn't look very like voxely. If you want it to look like that, you definitely can. It'll make it run a little bit faster. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and let me see if I can run it normally without caching it, but I might have to cache it. It'll be a little bit slower, but it'll it'll work out in the end. Um, oh, look, look at that. So as, as you can see, our cube is, is simulated just like that. Let me go ahead and bake it just for, just, just so it looks nice. And as you can see, we now have that cache. So I'm gonna go ahead and play it and see this at full speed. And look at that, our cube has fully compressed. I only baked it to frame 60. I can go a little bit farther just so we can get some animation after it's been crushed. But if I go ahead and look from the camera's point of view, as you can see, Look at that, our, our hydraulic press has crushed our cube. I think I think that's pretty cool. You can go and mess around with some of these settings here because you just kind of can. Just know that the more you subdivide an object, the more you'll have to increase the bending as you subdivide it because just like naturally, the more vertices it has, the less structure it will have. So just be mindful of that. Other than that though, you should be good to go ahead and increase the subdivisions, make it more realistic. And of course, add a texture to this, because right now, if I go ahead and render this image, it doesn't look very good. That's because I don't have any lighting set up or any of that. And so, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and get you through the lighting, too. So, let's go ahead and go into our render preview mode. Now, as you can see, we've got a light up here, but I don't really want that. I'll just go ahead and add an area light. Now, this will just give a broad area that'll just look pretty nice and won't look weird at all. Let me go ahead and bring it over here, rotate it on the X 90 degrees, and let me go ahead and increase its power a little bit. So I'm going to set it to 100 watts. Okay, that is way too bright, or just way too close. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it back a little bit. Oh, see, there you go. See, now, now this is a nice gray. You can see its features outlined, right? And yeah, as you can see, it looks much nicer than before. Now, there's no textures in this, so if you want, you can go ahead and go up to our lovely jubbly shading category up here and go ahead and add some shading to this. So I'm not going to add very much, but you can be all fancy and do whatever you want with it. So I'm going to go ahead and go into our metallic and set that to one. Now this will make our material very shiny and I'm going to decrease the roughness to say 0.25. As you can see, there's a little bit of reflection. In it. If I go back to the layout tab, as you can see, it looks very metallic and industrial, kind of like how you want an industrial indus industrial hydraulic press to look. And that's really all that I'm gonna do, but you also optionally can add a little border around the side where my mouse is on both sides with a warning thing. I might include that in the Blender file in the description. So if you wanna have that, uh, be sure to check the description for a finished model with that. But other than that, you really don't need to do much more because you have your simulation. now. Another thing that you can do is simulate this with other objects. Now, just a warning before you do do that, is that the more vertices you have, the longer it'll take to simulate, of course. So if you have, say, 500 vertices, it's going to take much longer to simulate than this simple cube that has, like, 300 vertices, you know? So just keep that in mind when you're doing these kind of simulations, because you can definitely take a long time to get something, and it can be very, very buggy, because this is not, like, some sort of scientific, realistic, soft body simulation. This is Blender. This is an animation program that is meant for creative design. So just keep that in mind while you're making stuff. But for this very simple thing of making a cube in Blender, as you can see, it looks very nice and it also works very well. As if I play it again, look at that. Our cube gets crushed. I'll go ahead and show you the final simulation in a moment. I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in a bit. See ya.